Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a video about large growing shrubs. These are gonna be things that can go on the border of your property to create a screen or a wind block perhaps, or maybe there's a spot on the corner of your foundation where you can use something uh, that's larger. But most of these things are going to be labeled somewhere eight foot plus uh, and uh, will be controllable. Again, I like to talk about in these videos, think about labels as maintainable at. So if this Osmanthus fragrance is labeled at eight to 12 feet, it would be easy to keep at that height. It's probably gonna try to get bigger than that uh, in the future. The plants don't have some sort of automatic off switch. So jumping right in, this is Osmanthus fragrance or fragrant tea olive. This is a, a fall and winter blooming shrub. Basically warm nights uh, in the fall and warm nights in the uh, late winter. Uh, we get uh, small, uh, small flowers along the stems that are incredibly, incredibly fragrant. This is not the most cold tolerant plant that will be in this video. This one is most of the time listed zones eight to 11, but we're in zone seven B in Raleigh is where I work out of and they're all over zone seven. Uh, if you're going to plant one in zone seven, I'd spring plant it so that it has a season to get established before it goes, um, before it goes into its first winter. But again, seven in parentheses, eight to 11, definitely hardy. And in eight to 11, you can put it out as a screening plant and, the, and have the wind. Um, you know, uh, not, not cause it a problem. But this is one of the best, the best options for a screening plant here in the South. You can't talk about large growing shrubs or screening plants without talking about Arborvitae. These are, uh, this is Emerald Arborvitae behind me and right there in front of the camera where Steph is, those are DeGroote's Arborvitae. Both of these are Thuja occidentalis. And if you look at the native range of where Thuja occidentalis is actually from, it's actually north of Pennsylvania into Canada. And we try to grow these way down in the south and literally every place you go. Um, they're beautiful in the containers. They're soft to the touch. They have that perfect Christmas tree look that people, you know, are really, really drawn to. Um, but it's a bit hot here in zone 7B and, and in zone 8 where folks are trying to uh, grow these. And so they do have some stress related issues. If you go without watering these, you know, they can they can have problems pretty quickly. They can get bagworms from, you know, stress-related insect problems, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but again, this is one of the most widely sold uh, plants. And they, they, you know, I've seen these as tall as 25 feet. Um, you know, most folks are probably putting them on the corner of a foundation, trying to keep them in that 10, 12 foot range, something like that. I will say that up in the western part of North Carolina, uh, I've seen the North Carolina Department of Transportation using DeGroote's uh, on the side of the interstate, and they do seem to hold up overall better than emerald uh, in the landscape. But I think this plant should really be something that folks in the Northeast and in Northern climates should be looking at. The other thing is, uh, these aren't, <laughs> I don't talk about deer resistance a whole lot, but I wanna talk about this plant. If you do have deer, this is another thing to avoid on these. They will just limb them up from the bottom as high as they can reach up they'll defoliate them. It turned them into actually kind of interesting art, <laughs> if that's what you're going for, uh, but keep that in mind, uh, deer, deer love them. Here's two more great fast growing evergreen screening plants. The one in the back here is Prague Viburnum. This one's very cold hardy, uh, hardy up to zone five. Some winters can actually kill this plant back or defoliate it up there, but uh, it comes right back from it very quickly. It gets a fragrant cluster of flowers on it. Uh, in the uh, spring, I have a recent video on the garden plants with uh, Jim Putnam channel. If you want to go back, go see some more details about Prague Viburnum. This is a great, it's a great plant. Uh, more sun, the fuller, the fuller it is, uh, but it'll take some light shade as well. You just have to do a little bit of pruning on it, um, you know, after it flowers in the spring. Great plant. In front of that, there's some Shindo Viburnum. This is a very fast growing uh, upright Viburnum that's uh, really become one of the top selling screening plants available. I see these just just everywhere now. Uh, it does get a uh, flower and a red fruit on it. It takes several years for it to show up typically. This plant, uh, when I'm talking about screening plants with folks, uh, I, I, I like to t recommend mixed screens. That's one thing I should say in this video about large plants is I'm not, I'm not giving you these examples so you go out and buy one thing and make a hundred foot line of them. Uh, it's best to have some sort of mixed border so that if some sort of disease or insect problem comes along, um, it doesn't take out your entire screen at one time. This plant, I always tell people, this is the one I would stand back and decide 
what area do I really want to screen? What's most important? If I'm sitting on my screen porch and I'm looking at the neighbor's screen porch, that's where I put the Shindo viburnum in that line. It, I think it's the toughest, uh, most resilient, thickest, you know, most reliable screening plant we have here uh, in, the, in the south. It, but you're going to think I'm lying to you about the rate of growth. You put this thing in the ground, it won't grow for a little while. It seems to require, even in a container in a nursery, it does the exact same thing. It requires a period of time to get, get rooted in and established, and then it takes off very, very quickly. So most of the time when people purchase these Chinese hollies uh, as screening plants or compact uh, growing plants, they choose Dwarf Burford. Dwarf Burford's always been the most available one. I let a Dwarf Burford holly grow out for about 15 years at my nursery, and it was not only 10 to 12 feet tall, it was also 10 to 12 feet wide. And I don't think a lot of people have that much ground space to give up. So I've always preferred needlepoint. And if you look in this group of needlepoint hollies, you can see that most of the growth is very vertical. And uh, I think it's a better, um, th th this one's gonna be in the medium size video and in the large video. So you can keep this plant from four to six feet, you know, as a medium size shrub. If you got, you know, tall windows or a corner of a foundation, again, it's very vertical. Uh, or it can be put on the edge of your property as a screening plant and uh, get up into that eight to 12 foot range over a period of time and uh, just make a fantastic screening plant. But again, it's adaptable to almost any situation. I think it's a better choice for most landscapes than Dwarf Burford because it just doesn't take up as much of a footprint. So we might as well jump right over to uh, Dwarf Burford again. I'm gonna put this one in the medium sized plant uh, group and the large growing plant group. If you just leave it alone, again, I had one that got you know, 12 feet tall and it would have still been growing uh, if it was there uh, if it was there today. But again, can easily be kept in that six to eight foot uh, height range. But again, look at the growth habit on this one versus what we just saw uh, on the needle points where the needle points are very vertical. You see this one's gonna spread out uh, as much as it is um, gonna get tall. Uh, but again, I'm not knocking this plant in any way. I just think a lot of folks have smaller, on a smaller lot, uh, needle point just makes sense. The name Dwarf Burford's a bit deceiving. Uh, you would think a plant with a, you know, that's called dwarf something would not get 12 feet tall, but it's dwarf of Burford holly. Burford holly is really a small tree almost. We've seen Burford hollies that are, you know, in the 30 foot plus range. Uh, so it is dwarf of that. So, uh, but if you're looking for a broadleaf, shiny, dark green holly like this, it's actually a dwarf. Carissa is the one you're looking for. So this is an interesting one. This is a uh, Steed's holly. Steeds is, a, if, is like if you took compacta holly, which becomes a pretty large round ball, and then you took the skinny, super skinny sky pencil holly and you combine them together, you'd get steeds. Steeds can be shaped as a small little Christmas tree. It can be pruned very tightly. These have just been allowed to grow up and stretch out. But they, they can be sheared uh, into little Christmas trees and be kept as kind of medium sized ornamental shrubs on the corner of a foundation, maybe next to a set of steps going into the house used as a container plant that way as a small little Christmas tree, or this plant can go out to the edge of your property and just be allowed to grow and get quite big. And so, you know, it's also would make an effective screening plant uh, where you don't need, you know, you don't need 20 feet, um, but you need more than six feet. Uh, this is, this would be the perfect plant for that. Uh, again, I'm going to say on the, you know, these upright Japanese hollies, sky pencil would go into a narrow plant video. And this one right here, I do see that they're not the most drought tolerant things in the world, even after they're established. So this is one, it's worth having, but if you know you're in an abnormally dry time, steeds and sky pencil are gonna be two that I'm gonna drag a water hose to for sure. So we just showed the steeds hollies being allowed to just grow upright and would become really good screening plants. Or again, they can be pruned into these little uh, Christmas trees like this, and you can shear the sides of them whenever you wanna shear the sides of them, but pretty much anything from you know, five feet in height to as tall as you want to let it get. And, you know, perfect little Christmas tree like that. This one is definitely a screening plant. Uh, this is golden Oakland holly. Uh, Steph and I have one of these in a container in the garden. And we also have one uh, in the ground in a part shaded space. And the variegation's held up quite well in the, uh, in the shade as well. There's a green Oakland holly we'll find in one of these screening plant videos and one called oak leaf. Uh, oak leaf's been around a long time. Oakland is an improved version of oak leaf. And then this is the golden uh, Oakland holly here. This is one of the best variegations in a holly that I've seen. A lot of times variegated hollies are just kind of all over the place, you know, where they're, you know, there's some darker green. The, the variegation is just different on every, on every branch. And this one is really quite stable and uh, therefore very, very colorful. What a great pop of color this is. 
This will get as large as you want to let it get. If you're in a hurry to have a screen, a variegated plant's not going to grow as fast as a green version. So you'd probably want Oakland if you were in a real hurry. Um, the, but the golden Oakland would definitely be worth the wait. Look how beautiful the, this plant is. Camellias are amongst my favorites. You can probably tell that from uh, if you've watched my videos for any length of time. Uh, I do love camellias. I'm trying to put the most some of the more interesting ones uh, in this uh, in the video here with the uh, large growing plants. This one's called Autumn Rocket, and you can see the fastidious growth habit it has. It's very unusual this way. Uh, most uh, Camellia sasanquas would have been much wider at this point than this one is. They're not doing anything special to this. This is the way this thing grows. And so if you have an, a narrow spot where you can use something that gets 10 or 12 feet in height, uh, maybe creep through that eventually, uh, easily controlled though. White flowering, flowers in the fall, uh, mid to late fall, right up until Christmas. Great new burgundy sort of foliage on it uh, during the growing season when it's actively growing. It's absolutely covered in flower buds. It'll be blooming. I'm filming this in September. By October, it'll be showing some color. But look at this. If you've got that little narrow spot where you're trying to cover something on your house, this autumn rocket camellia would be perfect for that. I'm in a sea of ruby laura pedalum here at Adcox Nursery in uh, Fuquay, North Carolina. This is actually a nursery you guys can come to uh, if you're interested. And uh, looking on their website, they have some open Saturday mornings uh, if you're interested. Uh, mo a lot of the nurseries I go to are mostly wholesale. This one does offer some retail. Ruby laura pedalum is an interesting plant. This is one that I grew for a long time when I had my nursery. Every tag you ever see is going to say four to six feet by four to six feet. And it'll absolutely get four to six feet by four to six feet, and then it will just keep going. And so, I, I, you know, I put this in the medium-sized plant category, but I will tell you, when I left my nursery behind, I had one that was at least 12 feet in height, and it had been pruned several times over the years. So there's nothing, there's no real off switch for this plant, but it's got great purple foliage, great, there's little frilly uh, witch hazel-like flowers on it in the spring, and you'll see some residual ones even here in September. When we're filming this this one has a lot of the breeding work that's been done on these purple laura petal and it's have the purple all the way through ruby has a has a has, has kind of a green uh center to it it's actually very attractive the two-tone coloration is very attractive the flowers are attractive definitely worth it as a plant but you know for me, I don't necessarily buy this as a kind of mid-sized plant. I buy this one as a screening plant and uh, just let it get whatever size it wants to get over time and let it do its thing uh, and it'll be beautiful. So we looked at that golden Oakland holly and I mentioned Oakland and oak leaf. This is oak leaf holly. You can see how fastidious this is, meaning it just wants to go up, you know, directly up, which is great. Again, I, you know, there's a, a lot of folks have small lots and if you're using something like Nellie Stevens holly, which is probably the most popular of these upright hollies, it gets very broad uh, at the base without a lot of really taming it. Uh, whereas Oakland or Oak Leaf are gonna grow narrow like this kind of on their own. Uh, these are uh, self-fruiting, and so they have the male and female parts uh, on the plant, so they will berry set even with only one, only one plant, but probably will perform better fruiting uh, with more than one plant. But this is Oak Leaf holly. Next up is a Clara. Uh, this variety is called Leanne. There are lots of different great uh, Clara. They just make great evergreen shrubs, and some of them are easy to keep small, you know, to, you know uh, medium size evergreen shrubs. Uh, that would include Leanne right here, uh, or they can, a lot of them can get really, really big. This one can get some size on it as well, so I've put it in the large group as well. This one, um, you know, will get between 10 and 12 feet if you just let it maybe a bit more than that over time. But where I have them out here in the front garden, I'm actually gonna keep them you know, about this height. This is about as tall as I'm going to allow this one to get. Leanne gets just beautiful reddish burgundy foliage uh, anytime it's actively growing. So here we are near the end of the season and it's still got a little bit of new growth on it. So it has some of the color, but it has a lot more of it uh, during the uh, spring and uh, early, early summer months. During the winter, I'll cut this down about two feet below where I want to keep it, and it will just spring back there uh, during the uh, spring. So again, a, a good medium evergreen shrub or a large screening plant, Leanne Clara. So some of the Clara that I show on the channel could be kept in that medium size range. They're variegated ones like Juliet uh, that are 
easily kept much smaller. There's Leanne, which we have here in the front garden. It can be kept four or five feet, but it'll get 10 feet. This one's called Bigfoot. So there's only one direction this one's going. Uh, this one is going to get as much as 15 or 20 feet in height. A uh, great choice as a screening plant. Uh, I, I will tell you that Clara eventually thin out a bit down at the bottom and as, as they kind of, the top of the plant will shade the bottom of the plant, which for me in this garden is opportunity. We'll just tuck something under here when it stretches up big and tall. It sat here uh, most of the first season it was in the ground because it's in a kind of a dry shady area over here. All this, this, will, this will absolutely take full sun. But where I've got this is in a little bit of dry shade and you can see how full it is. Uh, it really, once it got itself anchored about mid, by midsummer this year, has really started to put on some growth. I expect this thing to grow at least a couple feet, maybe three feet in, in a single season next year. But this one's called Bigfoot. Great for creating a border between you and a neighbor very quickly. Here's an arborvitae called Forever Goldie. Uh, this is Thuja plicata, and I find these to be a bit more drought tolerant overall than uh, Thuja occidentalis that I talked about with like the emeralds and things that I see really struggling in the heat. I think these are a bit, any Thuja plicata is a little more heat tolerant and a little more drought tolerant. What a great plant this is. This one is listed on the tag for 10 to 12 feet in height and uh, three or four, four to five feet in width. So super narrow upright habit. My guess is, is that pretty much every one of these upright conifers I've ever seen will get taller uh, than the uh, tag says. But I think you could keep it sheared uh, if you wanted to try to keep it in that 10 foot height range, but great for a corner of a foundation. And I think just overall a little bit more of an industrial plant with a bright pop of gold color on it. So most of us are used to Indian hawthorns being in the landscape, being little round, little round balls. Uh, and I put one in a compact uh, plant list recently. If you want to go back and take a look at that video, that's super disease resistant. This variety right here is called Rosalinda and it has it's big in every way. This one can get 10 to 15 feet in height and equally as wide. Typically grows as a shrub, full down to the ground. This one has actually been limbed up into a small tree. Gets incredible clusters of fragrant pink flowers on it in the spring. They're wildly fragrant. Great, great plant. Super clean, dark green foliage, but much, much, much larger than the dwarf varieties of Indian hawthorn. But this is a great plant. Uh, it's not as cold, not quite as cold hardy as the uh, dwarf, um, some of the dwarf varieties that we tend to list in zone seven. This one's definitely listed for zone eight. Again, I'm in zone seven B um, and uh, I did put a cover on this one time last winter when we were having some high winds and cold weather to protect it. I think now that it's been in the ground for more than a year, it's gonna be totally fine. But this is a great plant in warmer areas as a border plant or a screening plant between you and a neighbor. So I'm putting this one in a large growing shrub video of evergreen things, uh, but it's probably more accurately a tree, really. I think most people would call it a tree. This is an evergreen dogwood. Uh, this one's called Empress of China. Very long flowered, um, almost two months this thing flowered uh, this year. It's been in the ground for uh, two and a half years or so, and it's reached uh, eight to nine feet in height at this point. I think we'll see it get every bit of 15 feet in this space. Flowers for a long, long time, and then it, ha it has this uh, red uh, fruit on it that starts to color up here in the fall. So this thing is constantly, constantly doing something. Uh, it's really kind of tardily deciduous, meaning that it holds its leaves throughout the winter, but it does shed a lot of them in the late winter as new leaves are coming on it. So there's really no gap in time where it doesn't have leaves, but uh, technically it does lose uh, these leaves late in the winter, but what a beautiful plant this is. I mean, look at the screen it's creating out here at the, at the front of our garden. Uh, we, you know, really can't see through it at all. And uh, again, it'll get about 15 feet tall. Beautiful group of Nellie R. Stevens. This is definitely gonna be a, um, a plant that's very frequently used as a screening plant. Again, as big as you wanna uh, let it get. These have been sheared pretty narrow as you can see. Its natural habit is definitely a bit wider than this. And so I'm more, a little more drawn to oak leaf in Oakland than Nellie R. Stevens, but this is just, I mean, it's an easy plant. It's self-fruiting. So you get the, the flowers in the spring and the berries in the fall, it has the great dark green color. And this is one of those plants, if you've got, you know, if you've got a wide enough space to put them in, you can put this in and, and you know, within a few years, it just makes an almost impenetrable boundary. These are wax myrtles. Uh, wax myrtles are native 
uh, large growing shrubs that this can get, these can get as big as you want them to get. It can be tree formed, you know, limbed up from the bottom, which they'll kind of naturally do on their own, or they can be tip pruned a bit uh, to keep them fuller down to the ground. This is a great native option for screening, uh, very quickly screening a neighbor. It's also extremely deer resistant. This is Robin Holly, another fast growing upright evergreen holly. This one stays on the narrower side always been super drawn to robin holly it has perhaps almost the, the richest dark green shiniest foliage of almost any of these upright hollies every time i can i can pick this one out of a crowd uh, just by how dark green uh, that leaf actually is it's also a, it's another self-fruiting one so it will uh it will uh it'll fruit on its own uh, if you only have whether you have one plant or more uh, again I want to reiterate, you know, I wouldn't put in a 50 foot screen of these. I, I, you know, this is a plant you'd plant three of and then, you know, pick something else of these other large growing things that will grow in your area and just kind of break that screen up some. Last up for this large growing evergreen plant video is this Laura Petalum behind me. I'll talk a bit more about it in just a second. Uh, there are other videos for compact growing plants, mid-sized growing plants, another video for large growing plants, and we're going to be covering narrow growing plants and uh, ground covers, all kinds of things in these types of videos coming up. So make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. And thanks to Adcox Nursery and Pender Nursery and Swift Creek Nursery and our own garden here in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, where we filmed all of these plants. So thanks to those guys. This uh, Laura Petalum behind me is called Carolina Midnight. Many of the Laura Petalum that are sold on the market can get uh, this kind of height on them. This is one that just hasn't, it, I pruned it very, very early this year, but it has grown, you can see, probably five additional feet of height since it was pruned earlier in the season. Beautiful purple foliage, beautiful pink frilly flowers on it in the spring, and then it'll get some residual flowers on it. I'm gonna absolutely cut this one in half in the late winter this year. And But again, it's gonna try to jump up four or five feet. In the compact uh, plant video, or yeah, there's a uh, purple daydream, so there are dwarf ones. I've got one called emerald snow that's kind of a mid-size growing white flowering one with green foliage. So there are Laura Petalum that will stay smaller, but most of the old varieties and even a lot of the new varieties will do this. You know, if you, <laughs> and so keep that in mind. They're not, make sure you're getting one, if you're going to put it on a foundation, make sure it's not uh, one of the uh, larger growing one or, or ones that can grow this fast. So this is Carolina Midnight Laura Petalum. Thank you guys for following along with the channel and these uh, plant uh, size specific videos. And uh, don't forget to follow along for more. Thanks for watching.